This is Rebecca at chemistryismyjam.com. In this video, we are discussing scientific notation, and this is part of a larger discussion about measurement that we are beginning. I want to first address why we use scientific notation. One of the reasons that we use scientific notation is that it is great for writing really large or really small numbers. Keep in mind, in chemistry, sometimes we're going to be counting atoms, and atoms are super tiny. So when we count atoms, a lot of times we use the number that you can see on your screen. That is 602 with 21 zeros after it. It would be really time consuming to try to write that number out every time we wanted to use it. So this is one example where scientific notation is super helpful. Scientific notation always follows this pattern. You have a number times 10 to some exponent, and the exponent is telling you how far that you have to move the decimal. I also want to point out that there are some general guidelines about that number. You want the number to have one digit to the left of the decimal, and then any other digits would be to the right of the decimal. So there's typically only one digit to the left of the decimal. To go from the number written in scientific notation to the number written in normal notation, it's important to recognize where the decimal is. In scientific notation, you write the decimal to where there's only one number to the left of it. But in normal notation, that decimal would have been right here at the end of the number. So this 23 is telling me how many spaces I moved that decimal. The other piece of information that I can get from the exponent has to do with whether or not it is a positive or negative number. So my decimal in scientific notation is right here, and the exponent is positive, I need to move that decimal to the right to get back to the original number. So I would take this decimal and move it 23 places to the right. If my exponent had been negative, I would have taken my decimal here and moved it 23 places to the left. But in this case, we had a positive exponent, so we moved it to the right and got a very large number. Let's look at some more examples where I've given you a number in scientific notation, and I'm going to show you how you can go from that to the normal notation. Keep in mind that whether or not the exponent is positive or negative tells you which direction to move the decimal. For example, in this number I have 2.54 times 10 to the negative fourth. That negative four tells me that I'm going to be moving the decimal to the left. So the decimal is starting right here. I'm gonna move it one, two, three, four places to the left. This is the new location for my decimal. And all of these little spaces here get zeros. So you can see that my number started as 0 .000254. In the next example, I have a positive exponent. So I'm gonna take that decimal and move it three places to the right. One, two, three. My new decimal is here. I have this empty space here that represents where a zero would go. So my number looked like this, 5,420. And then in my last example, I have another negative exponent. So the decimal needs to go to the left. My decimal is here. I'm gonna move it two places to the left. There's a space there that gets a zero. So my number started as 0 .0480. A little rule of thumb that you can use to help check yourself as you do these. If you have a very small normal number, you should have a, a negative exponent. Whereas if you have a very large normal number, you should have a positive exponent. So that's something you can look out for to help check yourself as you do these. In a future video, we're going to be discussing significant figures. So for now, I just want to point out that over here on the left-hand side of the multiplication symbol, you would only include significant figures. So I will remind you of that later. But when we see significant figures later, all of the figures here are considered significant. This video began our discussion of measurement by reviewing scientific notation. 
I hope you'll stick around for the next video where we'll be talking about what it means for a measurement to be valid.